Hello, my friends. Uh, we're looking at uh, still working on our current cycle. We are in between cycles six and seven. Uh, in theory, there's a number of steps and things that we want to do. And I, instead of just running like a two or three hour long damn video, I wanted to break some of this down. Uh, previous one. So a couple of things I wanted to take care of. I want to explain talk to uh, you know, just to hear about uh, how the, the tech nerve, how we deal with our population and my initial population came in with uh, this the, the colonial the colony ship is 10,000 people and since I didn't push it past uh, cycle six I didn't lose anybody and the breakdown splits it in four ways or three ways 50% of the 10,000 are considered families Etc. Then, 2,500 are labor, and 2,500 are Tech One technicians or Level One technicians. Now, the bulk of my government agencies, for example, are going to be based off of Tech Ones. And I can improve their skill sets, their abilities, all this other stuff over time. And that's something I'm going to want to do. There's also a couple things I wanted to, to touch on because I'm going to set up uh, my government. And once again, that's kind of a, a lengthy process. Once it's set up, it's, it's all done. It's just a matter of keeping, keeping up with the accounting. Yes, yeah, so like I said, if you're not big on the number crunching, then this is probably not going to be your type of game. Without a doubt, if you're looking for something just to, for... I don't know, an ADD mindless individual or somebody with a, who loves to crunch numbers, i.e. a you know accountant looking to relax, this could very well be that, that sort of game for you. It's just a matter of what you want to get out of it and how much you want to put into it. Uh, as soon as I can find it, of course. Oh, for peace sake, come on, where you at? I had this marked too, and then uh, Frankie took the page, my piece of paper out where I had it marked. Conveniently, uh, where you at? This gear, this guy was really up front. I probably passed right past it twice. No, I'm still in exploration. Ministry, yeah, we're getting into the ministries. Okay, so there's there's seven different ministries, and uh, the Ministry of Defense actually has several sub ministries that 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 goes in there. Uh, we're not going to cover all of them, but we are going to cover uh, uh, two right off the bat because I have a reason for doing that. Uh, I'm going to deal with uh, where you at? the Ministry of Culture and Education. CNE's primary role is the management and advancement of the House of Citizens, providing services such as information and governmental media, schools, cultural vendors, and ministries is able to help guide and nurture the population along the desired path set by the House Lord. The game adage is, where goes the house lord, so goes the population, All right? So I'm going to look for CNE. and e Because that's my overall worksheet there. There's my executive ministry. There we go. Ministry of Culture and Education. And so in this case, uh, beginning, beginning staff pool is 10 plus the regional population times 0 .0001. So when we're talking about uh, regional population, the regional population is the, all the population under the, within 10 light years that are directly answerable to the house. Remember that alien world with a big ass population that I rolled up I wasn't thrilled about. But there's actually some some means to tap that as a resource for nothing as a protection, as a protectorate. The house officially claims that population, whether the population wants to be claimed or not, uh, whether the house actually directly interacts with the population has no bearing, but I can actually tap those as soon as I understand exactly how big that population is, or at least a very good uh, estimate of it, then I could officially, legally, under the Imperium's uh, BS, could cl claim that as part of my population. But there's a lot of downsides to doing that too, and I am in no way willing to do that. But I do know at my current current level, I gained 80 people, so I have 10,080 population as of this cycle. So I want to say. Uh, do this in pencil. We're talking 
currently cycle seven because that every time I update this I'm going to change it to the current cycle and make some adjustments so if I take the the total population of 10,000 10,080 times 0 0.0001 times 0 0.0001 that gives me one rounded up 1.008 so rounded up is 1 plus 10 uh, gives me uh, 11 so x equals 11 so my Ministry of Culture and Education is now going to have 11 employees in it and in this I'm, I have that aside from that I also have the minister who's operating the schedule or the uh, the ministry and their personal assistant or ministry secretary a secretary both of them uh, require a, a salary per cycle and we will get into that on a different video and all this adds up to what my ministry costs the house as part of our house expenses uh, and in addition to capital based house owned bills relating to culture and education so for example Example, of all these, my system-wide communications comnet or my SCN right here is part of that. So I would add the expense of that operating that where I had already did that in my in my exchange where I included what my uh, basic uh, uh, expenses were going to be for operating the government initially to get to the government expense part of that expense is based off of these bills and in this case this particular guild and whatever this uh, the, the the SCN system costs to operate on base on a regular basis is overseen by this ministry so it would be part of this ministry's expenses I can also through this ministry establish a constable and ranger service ie my planetary police force my cops my, my marshal service my rangers all these can be cr uh, created and controlled through the ministry of, of education culture and education if the house chooses to have a judiciary service you know the courts and judges uh, the penal service and rehabilitation camps house own communication bills such as SCNs con uh, networks support ships etc planet special planetary operations sub ministries as developed the miscellaneous these sub ministries are important too because okay I have two other breathable a moon and another moon and another another planet and a moon that are breathable in this system and I could choose to open up another colony on those planets, although the one with a big honk of population, I'm not inclined to do that because that can be very expensive very fast uh, and very dangerous to do, especially since the population is xenophobic and likely to try to destroy us. Uh, but there's other alternative paths to developing that kind of world and changing that attitude, but that's something that takes time and resources and effort and the will for you to do that. In the case of the, the ice moon that is full of, uh, that doesn't have a population, but has a bunch of, uh, of uh, yet unexplored uh, uh, ruins and, and a ruined civilization on there, then potentially uh, I would like to settle that, even if it's just on a small scale to figure out ways to exploit the advantages of that place. And I would need to then, all my ministries would need to have a sub-ministry on that planet. That would include a sub-minister, their pers personal assistant, and then whatever uh, whatever uh, staff that's allowed based on the planet's population, not the region. So anyway, right now I have 11, which is not very many, not really. So what I'm looking at doing, though, is... I know that I want to have some constables. I know I want to have rangers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I'm going to go down here and go into my Ministry of Culture, Ministry of Ministry of C and E, and I want to establish some either some cops or some rangers. Now. You can do this in three ways, in, or in two ways. You can have individual agents, and you can have special operations teams. Special operations teams generally begin at a, a squad level, five to seven, and then you build up. So I, I don't, I don't need, I don't want to use the entire eleven because obviously I need to have. Ideally, you need to be ten percent of your staff have to be administrative. So I need to have at least one of the ten uh, be administrative in addition to the two people running the show. 
that leaves me with 10. So I want to have one, one squad of five. constables. You know what? We're just going to go with rangers. One squad of rangers and five agents and cultural cultural agents, whatever you choose to call them. Technically I could still call them rangers but they're going to be agents and that, that's important because the differences later down the road you'll see we treat the squad, uh, special ops units as or special operations units as teams then they get equipped the same they get uh, a different set of parameters paperwork wise and things like this they also have less access to uh, personal scale stuff uh, that's not necessarily 100% true but it's just the way we like to break things down for keeping track of stuff. Individual agents on the other hand you can get you can do a lot more with and that takes another another form yet another form and that form would be so I basically creating uh, uh, NPCs that I can then send to do things to do jobs so for example I can task one or two of these and ideally I'm going to spend uh, send uh, two of them as a pair uh, to investigate that fringe port, that, that haven that I know I have on my planet, and to find out more information about it, to get some more information so I can figure out a better way to take use of it, exploit it, or destroy it, whichever works. So, and all of these are going to cost me revenue. It's going to make me have to spend some money. Another thing that I'm going to do is my opening house has the mil its military, and I'm allowed as a squire to initially set up uh, once again I had this tag yeah so you get this a little better all right, all right. I had it earlier tagged so I could find it in quick so in this case uh, when I look at creating the military for my house the home defense forces chapter Royal Def Protector Service the Royal Protectors in Combat so the Royal Protector Service the house begins the game with two platoons or ten squads or protectors. Think of the uh, of your uh, of the president's uh, secret service. So that's what I have. I have ten squads of protectors or royal protectors or secret service or whatever you want to uh, and call them. And then I get to increase. With every 100,000 population, a regional population, my protector service gets to gain an additional uh, squad or platoon. So I get to add another five squads. Now, 10 squads sounds like a lot. That's my God, that's 50 people. Well, that's true. First off, though, I don't have enough weapons and body armor to equip everybody. Also, these are my personal protection for my house lord and for other for his his or her residences and personal effects. So your colonial center, for example, ideally is going to be defended in part by the protector service. Your royal residence is going to be protected in part by the protector service. Protector service includes sometimes has to include things like technicians and specialists who are not combat related so or they're not going to be the guys with the with the, the you know the the shades and the earpieces and the hidden machine guns under their jacket because for every one of those that you know about there's probably five more in behind the scenes running things and looking after stuff and those people have their roles and are important too perhaps my house lord's going to have his own personal limo or a helicopter or something to transport to get around and he's going to want a pilot and that pilot's going to want to be part of the protector service or the head protector is going to want them and this also means that that there will be a chief protector and a sub chief and so on and so forth so there's once again layers and layers and layers of potential stuff and but these also allow the house lord to also have personal agents so potentially i can tap one of those squads to be special agents 
special protectors. And those are the people that eyes and ears or maybe the spies or whatever the house lord might use to tap to go do things to allow the house to get more information on something, to, to spy on somebody, to research something, whatever the technology or the, the, special, the, special, the specialization, specialization these particular agents are allowed to acquire. So that's something that, that's going to be set up as well. In addition to that, we have the regional militia, i.e. The, the army. The standard Imperium designation for House Lord's mainline army units is militia. A militia is more than a term, it equals the equivalent as a regiment or legion of size, capable, etc., etc. The house begins with one platoon or a lance. Now, since I don't have any tanks or a combat aircraft or or war knights, i.e. mechs, uh, I don't have a lance. But I'm going to initially start out with one platoon of militia, and I'll say the first the first Fairwind militia. Uh, Platoon, you know, platoon A or something like this. And over time, as the population increases in the region, then I can add more and I can add equipment and I can have gear. I can buy weapons and bigger stuff and I can outfit uh, tank units and, and, and APCs and, and aircraft and BTOs and sub submersibles and war knights, i.e. mechs, and other things to increase my overall combat. So if something plays out, and I send one of my cultural agents to investigate that haven, and it turns out that haven's got to go, well, I'm going to send the militia to go kick its balls in. I'm just saying. And the odds are also pretty good that uh, because I need to augment my military forces, uh, of the 10 squads of protectors, I'm likely to form a a protector platoon and the platoon is one so first platoon's job is to protect the house lord in all aspects so at least four of the five squads that would be assigned to that platoon are going to be defenders and protecting the house lord at all times and their residents and the next the last squad of those four of those five squads might be those independent specialists that i'm going to tap for special options and missions and things like this and then the other tw five squads will form a, a ad hoc platoon that I can either dole out by squad scale units to augment other ministry operations to give myself additional firepower but it also allows my protector service to uh, gain valuable experience in the field from interacting with scenarios and situation combat things like this in addition to all that you caught up with me, get with me. All right. Each planetary planet itself is settled, is allowed to have its volunteer militia or a planetary home guard, depending on how you want to call it. And so in this case, uh, and in, I always call it the volunteer, the VR, the volunteer militia, because the, there's actually a planetary guard. So like the, uh, which would be the equivalent of the National Guard in the United States, which is opposed to, say, the local police force, defense forces. I don't know how you want to break it down. So in this case, the, the volunteer militia, each house is allowed to have uh, each supporting house control colony has its own defense force called a home guard or volunteer militia. First and the last line of defense, etc. So your additional up to another platoon of home guard. Now, the caveat on that is that the damn population has to be in excess of 25 people. So if I set up a, 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 a seed colony somewhere and it's only got 80 people living on it, uh, the home guard there is likely to be a squad of five people because it just ratio wise, it's not going to work out. But my capital world is going to then have a platoon one platoon of militia and one platoon of VR. Now this gives me some reasons for this. Generally speaking, your volunteer reserve militia your home guard. These people don't go anywhere. These people stay on the planet, protect the planet, protect the interests on the planet. Where the militia, the, the, the house military, the army, is then can, is deployed 
aggressively proactive. They tend to while they're well when they're needed to be sent someplace else and then brought back. So the, the, if you get big enough forces, you're going to maintain both on your planet, and it beefs up the defense systems and, and your defenses. But you also have some flexibility here because now I can deploy the militia. That it's actually their expected job. Now we actually have bills that allow us to f form uh, Marine Corps, Space Marines. Uh, and specialty units and so on and so forth. So those are, you can continue to expand your military. You get quite robust over time, just like your Navy. There's no upper ceiling to it other than how much you can afford to support. If your house can't support it financially, uh, um, uh, materially speaking, then you can't support them. It's just, that's just a common sense. At some point, uh, we're going to build the uh, uh, basically an armory. It's called the uh, Royal Guards or Volunteer. The Planetary Guard stands somewhere in between the construction of, of a RNRC grants the resident noble or house lord the ability to form yet another level of defense. The, uh, the RNRC construction allows for the Planetary Guard to become officially a deployable force. So you gain platoons, lances, flights, gains additional units for every 25,000 regional population. So ideally, uh, my National Guard would then be developed and supported and deployable. And at this point, it, it, it duels, it can be both static defense for the fixed planet or as a augmented force to support my, my mainline army. And then later, as my house lord hits a certain rank, and I believe it's in Baron, uh, yeah, once the, the house lord reaches the rank of Baron, he may form a royal guard unit, in which at this point you begin to form pl uh, platoons, lances, etc., by adding additional unit for every 100,000 regional population. So th therein lies how this stuff grows. We also have, like I said, the Star Marine Corps, an Aerospace Corps, tech support units, regular commands, which we'll get to at some point, mercenaries, which we hire, then there's a breakdown, like the, the colonial const um, the constabulary, you know, the police, how that's going to operate, outfitting the constables, other ministry agencies. Yeah, so there's the rules on stuff, like when I talked about specialty agents, so my, my rangers, my culture, cultural ministry rangers, or rangers, but so I can have customs units, I can have uh, exploration units, field study groups. Uh, there's a lot of creative way of dealing with adding more forces to your stuff. That's another thing that with, that I want to touch on, and then I'll draw. I'll bring this uh, this one to an end as well. The uh, other one would be my my Ministry of Intelligence, and perhaps to me one of the most important. Uh, Naval operations, Ministry of Defense. These stupid things are just slightly off skew when they got printed. And I, like I said, I don't have the money for, for a cartridge for my own printer here, so I take these up to work with me when I get a chance. I print them off at the Xerox machine at the office, and uh, so they're slightly they're slightly out of sequence. Hopefully I can get another round of these created so I put them back in order because I would like to have them front and back so I can poke holes in them and stick them in a, in a binder. So in the Ministry of Intelligence, the same scenario played out when I did the math on population. So in this case though, instead of 0.0001, it's 002. And so I'm going to have two because the math will come out the same way. So I would end up with two. So my initial staff pool was 20 plus that modifier from region population. So I would end up with two on cycle seven. I would start out with 22, <gasps> excuse me, 10% of these 22, of course, are going to be administrative staff. Plus I have the spy master or spy ministers plus their personal assistant. And then I potentially am going to have a shadow budget. I have foreign field offices. These are for me to establish uh, operative spy operations on other planets that are not controlled by the house. Uh, blind, safe houses, and other support services. So remember, I got that planet with that hostile, uh, low-tech uh, population on it. One of the things I'm likely to do at some point in the near future is I want to start figuring out who they are, what they are, more information I can get, the more I can fill out about them, the better off I'm going to be, the more I can figure out a way to tap their, them as a, as a resource. And one of those things to do that is through various ministries establishing 
blinds or secret facilities someplace on their planet and become the proverbial UFO people to them, aliens to those people, and spy on them and to conduct operations potentially against them or to support them in ways that they don't know that they're being supported because it's 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 a way it's a matter of what you want to do how you want to approach it and what you can achieve and what your imagination allows that's a big part so field foreign opera uh, foreign field operations planes safe houses and other support services once again safe houses i'm a big believer in this stuff so ideally as soon as my population is large enough to support it my intelligence ministry is going to set up Second op secondary, secondary operation bases on my own world. So they're going to have their version of safe houses in case the shit hits the fan and I, and we have to deal with a big problem or a revolt or insurrection or an invasion, etc., etc. Then we also go by once again by groups. So ideally, you're going to start out with uh, uh, you have 22 people. So 10% of this is going to be administrative staff. So that's two. At least we have 20. And so by my operations, my choice will probably be to establish five, what I call 007s, five shadow agents, special agents, and three spec op teams. Because that'll be each squad has five people in it. And because I like to break five, it's just an easier number. You can have five, you can have seven. I mean, if you really want to go bigger than that, that's on player you, you, your numbers still have to support it so if you want one squad of, of, of 20 people you're only going to have one squad and it's only going to be able to be, do one thing at a time and there's a lot of stuff i mean it comes up that you only up doing 20 different operations in a given cycle plus all your other paperwork it take you two weeks just to do a cycle's worth of stuff right tell so anyway so that's kind of how we're going with that and that's that for this one and it's already run a little longer than I wanted to, and I'm trying to keep these as short as I can because I know there's a lot of stuff, a lot of information uh, to get through and to get to. So uh, between now and uh, the next time I do the next round of videos, I will uh, finalize all this stuff a little better so they're ready to set up to go, and we will go into cycle eight and do our rounds and uh, figure out what we're going to do. We're going at that point we'll start deploying some of these agents and other uh, assets to do some stuff. Till next time, this is Rick. Hope you guys have a great weekend. What's going on, my friends? This is Rick. And hey, if you like the channel, please hit the subscribe button. Uh, hit the like button. Tell your buddies. Tell your friends. Tell your coworkers. Tell anybody else that's in the gaming industry or gaming uh, fandom that says, hey, this is a channel worth checking out. Right? Till next time, I hope you guys have yourself a